Welcome everyone, 2022 is a wrap. So in this video, what I wanna talk about is, we'll go over our December trades, we'll talk about our 2022 trades, talk a little bit about our best and worst performing strategies, uh, give a little overview of the 2022 market performance. And then looking on to 2023, uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of a market prediction. Obviously, I have that in quotes. You guys know how I feel about predictions, but we'll talk about market expectations. Uh, a little bit about 2023 as far as my strategy focus and trading goals. So with that, let's start out and jump into the uh, trades for 2022. And actually, first, starting out with just our December trade. So for December, uh, buy strategy, starting with our dynamic calendar spreads, we had eight trades, eight trades, five winners, three losers, uh, a little bit of a negative P&L on the month, down about $1,100 on our calendar trades. And we talked a lot about in the community how these last couple weeks that were both holiday weeks, the week leading up to Christmas, the week leading up to New Year's, implied volatility does some funky things. So we significantly reduced our position size about in half. So that was good. So uh, took took a little bit of a loss, but significantly reduced our position size. Uh, same thing on Iron Ducks, a little bit negative as well, down twelve hundred for the month. Had eight winners, uh, excuse me, eight trades and five winners here as well. And then on Dynamic Butterflies, a little bit of a positive P and L plus four forty on five trades, four winners, one loser on our butterfly spreads. NTT, our navigation trend trading, trying to make a comeback, had a net PL of almost $2,200. So, this is the account that I started with $20,000 in last August, uh, built it up to almost $73,000. Uh, so, over tripled the account in less than 11 months. And, and it's been a little bit choppy back and forth. The last couple months have been a little bit of a drawdown. Uh, but working our way back there. So a little P&L in NTT. Options selling, a uh, great month on our options selling uh, strategies. Went seven for seven with a profit of a little over $1,700 for the month. And then our hedgehog strategy, which we just recently introduced a couple months ago. Uh, great, great month. Had 19 total trades, 14 were winners five losers for a win rate over 73% and total profit of $6,823.25. Day trading, uh, a little bit difficult. Chad runs our day trading live stream. This is uh, one of uh, a very few uh, red months. So he was down 390 for the month. I only day traded these strategies three different days. Uh, booked 329 uh, for those three days. So pretty flat on the day trading. It was a very difficult month for day trading, but I'll show you the history of the year and it's uh, uh, still very, very positive. Uh, and actually we'll go there now. So for annual trade performance, totaling up by strategy. So our calendars booked over $55,000 on our calendar spreads. Iron ducks got smoked out of quite a few ducks in some of those big down flushes in the market. So minus $3,800 for our ducks on 74 trades. Uh, calendars, we had 143 trades. NTT, total profit for the year, a little over $39,000 on 684 trades. It's a very actively traded system. Uh, for options selling, 50 trades, uh, almost $13,000 on our option selling trades. And then our hedgehogs, which we've only been trading for two months, tracking with the community for two months, uh, over 9,000 bucks in, in that two months. So look forward to some more hedgehogs going into next year. And then day trading, this is uh, both Chad and mine's combined, a little over 37,000 uh, on the day trades for the year. And then I have a category of other, uh, about 3,700 bucks there. So the only month that was red overall was April. And in fact, that doesn't even count these day trades. We did have some day trading profits here, but we were kind of transitioning over to Chad running the stream. And so I wasn't tracking him very well. So I just put zeros there. I know there were some profits in there, but for what we're tracking here, uh, minus 2000 that month, otherwise all green for a total profit for all the alerts that we put out to our community 
of a little over $140,000. If you're interested in uh, joining and following along what we're doing, just go to navigationtrading.com. You can click on the pricing button. Uh, we do have a special that runs until January 2nd uh, at checkout, 30% off. And that's 30% off for life. As long as you're a member, just use the code New Year in the checkout. So we've got a couple different memberships. Uh, we've got a, if you're just getting started, we have a free membership that gives you four course strategy courses for beginners. If you're ready to go all in, we have pro all access. This includes all of our strategies, all of our alerts, all of our trades, all the trades that you just saw, uh, any custom chart indicators and watch lists that we have video live streams and all kinds of other goodies. Or if you just want to take it one strategy at a time, We've got, uh, you could do just calendars, you could do just butterflies, you can do just the NTT, you could do just day trading, just iron ducks, or just the option selling strategy. So pick your choice. Uh, this is the one that's going to give you access to everything, including all these down below here as well. So check that out, navigationtrading.com. Just click on the pricing button. Make sure you do that before January 2nd to get that 30% off. No exceptions. Don't, don't email us afterwards asking for the discount. It will not exist because that coupon expires. All right. So now going back to the uh, slides. All right. So 2023 market expectations, market prediction. What are we looking at for 2023? Well, if we go to the trade tab and look at the options and look at the 349 days or, you know, that's one year, one year out. What does that look like? Actually, uh, actually the 364, I'm sorry. So yeah, the quarterly. So the expected move for the year of 2023 is plus or minus 834, call it 834 points. Okay. 834 points. So if we look at that on a chart, Here's where we closed. We closed in the in SPX at 3839.50. So if you go up 834 points, puts you right there. And if you go down, it puts you right there. So that is the expected move in the S&P 500 for 2023. Now, what do I think? Well, as you guys know, if you've been following me for any period of time, you know that I think any kind of prediction is a lot of BS. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But my personal opinion of what I think is going to happen is I think what we saw in 2022 is just scratching the surface of what we're going to see from downside going into 2023. So if I had to predict, my expectation would be down here closer to this 3000 level in the S&P 500 or lower. I'm going to I'm going to I'm just going to call my shot and say 2,800. I, I think that's where we, I think we get down to the 2,800 level at some point during the year. I think we're, I, I think the bears are in for a big year. I think the bulls are going to continue to have a little pain. All right. So that is my prediction for 2023. All right. Strategy focus. So what I'm looking at for my strategy focus and trading goals for 2023. So I just put down some, some notes here and I'm gonna talk about each of these. So to start with, as far as allocation goes, uh, this is kind of the breakdown uh, that, that, I'm, that I'm looking for to allocate my trades. Now, these numbers add up to 100%. So that doesn't mean I'm trading 100% of my account value. Far from it. I usually trade between 25 to 40% and the rest is in cash. Options use leverage. So we don't want to, we typically don't use the, we, well, we never use the, the entire account at one time. So, but of all the trades that I have on at any given time of the allocation, about 15% I want to allocate to calendar spreads. Okay. That's one of our best performing strategies. Uh, I think we're going to continue to have good uh, a good environment for calendar spreads. Uh, so about 15% of my trade allocation will be in calendars. Uh, about 5% into butterflies and short strangles and other premium selling, about 25%. So the heaviest allocation is going to be in premium selling. Uh, iron ducks, about 10%. NTT, 
I'll be allocating about 10%. Hedgehogs, about 25%. So hedgehogs and premium selling definitely going to be the meat of my allocation. And then 10% to day trading, which I'll talk about here in a second as well. Some other goals. Uh, only follow my rules for entry, exits, and adjustments. No news, no opinions. Uh, I'm pretty good at this anyway, but sometimes I, you know, veer off the veer off my path, forget what I'm doing, uh, forget I'm running my business, forget I'm trading as a business, and and kind of veer off into the the noise. Uh, so just as a reminder, only follow my rules for entry, exits, and adjustments. Focus on risk first, profit second. This is something that everyone should do at all times. If you focus on risk, if you manage your risk, if you have strategies that have an edge like we do, if you focus on the risk, the profit will come. So focus on risk first, profit second. Next, I'm going to continue testing. I've been doing a lot of testing on zero days to expiration spreads, primarily in SPX. Uh, so continue testing and uh, in trading zero DTE with different management methods and, and testing results until I kind of come up with what exactly it is that I want to do. And at that point, I will be sharing it with our community as well. Uh, document any gamble trades. So again, this is, I'm pretty good at not gambling. Uh, when I first started trading, I look, looking back, I was a gambler. That, that's all there is to it. Most trade, most new traders are gamblers. They don't follow the rules. They don't have a system. They don't have a methodology. They just place trades based on random things that they hear or see other people doing. Um, and, and for me, typically what I, what I would consider a gamble trade is a trade that I get into and maybe I let it go too long or I get out too early, or I do something that's out of the box of my specific rules and my specific methodology. So uh, I want to document anytime that happens, be very uh, diligent about documenting the results of those trades. And more importantly, notes on why did I feel like I needed to take that trade at the time that I did it? Because if looking back, I'm, I'm always like, why did I do that? So trying to be more diligent when that does happen, make sure I document both the results and the emotional distractions or whatever it is that, that, that happened to allow me to take a trade outside of my rules. Again, I don't do it very often. Uh, and it comes in small forms, but what can happen is if you let it happen once and you win, then it's okay to let it happen again, right? It, it's, it's, it's encouraging you to break your rules. So it's important to be aware of that and document such. So just a reminder on that. Uh, next, I want to I'm going to be doing a lot more detailed trade journaling. You know, I, I showed you just kind of the results from our trades for the year. Uh, and, and I historically have not really kept really good statistical reports on all my closed trades. Um, and so 2023 is going to be much different. In fact, I am saying completely goodbye to the spreadsheets. So the spreadsheets that you see here, uh, that, that I, that I show all my performance that I tracked all my trades on, uh, for each strategy, those are going bye-bye in 2023. Uh, I am going to be using a much more sophisticated and what I've found to be an easier system and that system is through an application called TraderSync. Uh, and I'll share this with you. I've, I've uh, negotiated with the, with the founders of this to get a discounted rate for navigation trading members. So I'll be posting that in the community. But essentially what this allows me to do is every day I can just upload a CSV file of my trades to, um, to the platform. And I can tag my trades in whatever type of trade it is. NTT, buy the dip, sell the rip. Um, you know, TGIF double calendar, bed and breakfast calendar, hedgehog, short strangle, whatever it is, uh, I can tag it that way. Now I can look at trades from not only a performance standpoint, uh, win loss, a profit factor, total profit, but I could also look at it by symbol. Uh, I can look at it by strategy. There's so, there's so much data that just is automatically kept and so many statistics that are automatically kept 
uh, that this is something that I've been wanting to do. In fact, I tried a couple others and I've been looking around and, and wanting to do this for a long time. And I finally made the leap. So all my trades for the last couple months have been loaded into this system. And so, uh, and then going forward, all new trades, it'll be all clean data going forward for 2023, uh, using this, using this platform. I also will be using this to report every month, uh, every week in the community. When I do my weekly recaps, I'll be using this to, to report. So it'll be pretty cool. And I I'm pretty sure it'll help me become a better trader. The other thing that this is, is a journal. I'll, I'll be able to journal each trade. I can journal just overall thoughts on the specific trading day. Uh, there's a lot of uh, just custom things that you can do within the system uh, that's going to, it's like a spreadsheet, but on steroids and it does a lot of the work for you. So uh, look forward to that in 2023. Uh, next, keep a balanced life. You know, one thing that I have found is that my P and L actually suffers when my trading is 100% focused. When trading is my number one focus, when that's all I'm thinking about, when that's all I'm, I'm focusing on my P and L actually suffers. Uh, and so keeping a balanced life, family, kids, fun, doing other things outside of trading away from the screens is extremely important and it actually creates better results in my P&L when I keep more of a balanced life. So that's a, that's going to be a focus. Uh, and then I kind of took a little hiatus from recording my podcast, the trade hacker mindset. If you haven't listened to that, you can find that on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts, but I'm going to be getting back into recording a podcast every week that'll come out on Mondays. So look forward to that. One thing you'll notice is what, what, what is one thing you noticed about my 2023 goals or what did it lack? It lacked a monetary goal, right? And I think that's so, so important. So many traders want to break it down and say, I want to make a thousand dollars a day, or I want to make $5,000 a week, or I want to make you know, next year I want to make a hundred percent return or, or all these different financially motivated goals. And it sounds counterintuitive because with trading, it's all about making money. So why would not, why would our goals not be about making money? And the reason is, is because anytime that I've ever set a monetary goal for trading, it always causes me to make trades or make decisions in my trading that are counterproductive, that actually make me do things outside of what I should be doing. Had I just been focusing on the strategy and the methodology and the discipline, uh, I would have done things the correct way and the right way and in a different way. But if my focus, even subconsciously, is on a monetary goal, it will cause you to do things in your trading that are counterproductive. So no monetary goals. And I would highly suggest for you all, uh, when you're going through your goals, Make sure that your goals are process-driven, discipline-driven, uh, methodology-driven, and not driven based on specific monetary goals. I think it'll really help your trading. So with that, goodbye 2022. It was a great year. And hello 2023. I think it's going to be our best one yet. So look forward to seeing everybody in the community. Look forward to seeing you next year. Have a great weekend and be safe New Year's Eve. Take care.